three, two, one. All right. Well, I'm back with Hans, a son of Mercury. And, That's uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> and and last time we talked, we were discussing, uh, we just gotten into Daredevil, jumping off a of Spider-Man thing. But I'm, I'm excited for them to renew or bring back the Daredevil show as long as they do it, you know, R-rated, because I know Disney's supposed to do it, and I don't trust them to, to do it if it's not as brutal as it was, but I'm, I mean, I'm hyped at the idea of it. Yeah, well, so, <coughs> excuse me again, I'm still, I'm still under the weather. This is an episode later, but man, I'm still, at the time of recording this, I still hadn't recovered. So I apologize to listeners again. I, I'm, I'm, I'm making it. I promise there's no COVID. I'm good to go. I'm just uh, pushing. Um, anyway, uh, so they're bringing back Charlie Cox. He's already uh, gone public and signed for Matt Murdock. Uh, they're bringing back Vincent uh, De, uh, Dion, Dion Frio, I think is his name. Dion, I can't pronounce his name right. Uh, I'm sorry, anyone can uh, correct me in the pronunciation if they want, but he's coming back as Kingpin. Um, so we already have our Matt Murdock, and we already have our Kingpin with the actors coming back for that. I'm not sure if Foggy... Nelson or Karen Page will be returning um, and I don't I think John Bernthal had interest in Punisher renewing but I'm not sure I know Rosario Dawson I don't think she I think she said she was done I think she's she's moved on uh, which is fine I mean her character was great but I'm, I'm pretty sure she moved on um, but yeah there's big things coming in and it's going to be through Disney Plus um, the Daredevil, I think, is going to be through Disney Plus. So there's already been teasers. Um, uh, I'm not going to give away anything, but there's already been uh, Disney Plus teasers of uh, Kingpin. So uh, I'm not going to say where it's at or who who teased it or what teased it. I'm just going to lay that out there. There already has been Kingpin teasers on on Disney Plus itself. So it it will probably be through them, but um. But they are going to have all the original actors sign on. Well, you know, the, the two main ones anyway, the two main ones that matter, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, I think they should, Um, I mean, this is a big, bigger issue, but I mean, if Disney's going to keep buying, keep buying stuff, they should, I think, <laughs> diverge into two tiers or two levels and put the adult stuff, you know, somewhere on Disney Plus that the kids can't get to. But I mean, Disney always had this facade of caring about kids. <laughs> Of, of caring about families so i i don't think that if they even if they did daredevil that it would be anywhere as brutal as it as it has been um but you can get away with that with daredevil if you do it right if you made it kind of noir and it kind of slowed down the pace even more somehow you could probably get away with it if it was more like a crime thriller yeah yeah but, but i mean which, which i think yeah. it would need to be almost but I, you know, I don't think it's going to be that way. Um, the teaser that they have out for that Disney Plus has for Kingpin is is putting Kingpin on a global scale. So I don't know uh, if they're going to make it make it that way or not. I so, would lo- I would love if they brought in Smythe. Do you remember him from like the uh, yeah yeah yeah? I remember he he he, was uh, cool. he, he always had the. Uh, he was in a wheelchair right yeah and he was like a, yeah. a genetic scientist he was a, a genius i think his work actually rivaled uh hank mccoy the beast's work that's right and i believe in a crossover episode with the x-men spider-man he mutated himself because he wanted to regain the ability to walk and he ended that up becoming it. like this mutant monster who could who had like wings or I don't know if there were wings or something that was over his shoulders that could shoot beams out of it. Yeah, it was really yeah. it was really weird, but it made sense in the comic sense. Yeah, he was big yeah. and strong then, and he like had these protrusions on his shoulders that could shoot like laser beams. <laughs> yeah, and I remember Hank McCoy was was part of that. That was part of one of the crossovers because they crossed over a yeah. few times. Was one of the crossovers was he was using Beast uh, uh, knowledge in the mutant gene and and to get his legs back, and he ended up transforming himself i think i think you're right and i could be wrong but i think yeah i think he actually used some of hank's research but yeah i'll never forget that that happened that crossover happened and i loved i loved it but that the x-men their color shading was off because the animation studio i think was different 
or something yeah, like it, it was, was. <laughs> i just remember as a kid being like that looks weird <laughs> but, and they and they and in the and in the TV series, they tried to recreate the Spider-Man versus Wolverine. And I think in the last yeah. episode, we should have brought that up. We should have brought up that confrontation, Spider-Man Wolverine. And I'll bring that up real quick just to just to give it justice. You know, I've never been a big Wolverine fan because of all the the, the hype around him. But that's because of the movie hype. That's the yeah. Hugh Jackman, which I love Hugh Jackman as an actor. I don't care for his Wolverine. I don't and, either. But but what I'm saying is like you're right. But what I'm saying is like the character though like the comic book character and even in the anime cartoon he was a cool character and yeah, he was this little guy fought, you wanted in a fight yeah and when he fought spider-man I mean, that was a cool fight yes yeah, um, spider-man embarrassed him <laughs> yeah he did he, he wrapped his uh, claws up so he couldn't claw him. yeah and, well, and, uh, he, and he covered him in webbing and i mean like, and, not, and not and not to go back to the last episode where you and i spoke but i mean people forget that spider-man is ridiculously strong like yeah, he, he just doesn't know how to fight. Yeah, and Wolverine made that point to him. Wolverine was like, "You got all the strength in the world, kid, but you can't fight." Mm -hmm. And that was always how he lost to those who could. Like that's how Punisher. Yeah, Captain, beat Cap Captain America beat him one time. Yeah, right. Because he was like, because you know, Captain America's like, "Wow, you hit hard. You, I just wish you knew how to actually hit." Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, no, I, I I love Charlie Cox as a as daredevil the, the oh yeah I, I mean the the netflix show to me is like a 95 out of 100 the, the five percent i think is just some of the dialogue wasn't as on point as it could be some of it was very some some of the acting or some of the lines written were kind of millennial especially with karen like yeah there's a lot of karen doesn't know how to handle her emotions and doesn't know what she's doing <laughs> yeah, but I mean, those are very, very, very minor, minor things for the 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 what they did overall was amazing, you know. You know, I loved you know what series I really loved, and it focused around Daredevil. It it, it ended with him; he was the exclamation point at the end. Um, and it, and it involved him with Electro was the Defenders. Yeah. I thought the Defenders was fantastic, and a lot of people harp on Iron Fist. I didn't have a problem with Iron Fist. I thought Iron Fist was good. Um, and I thought Luke Cage was great. I thought uh, I loved the actor who played Luke Cage. He's in a great show now. Evil. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah. That show a lot too. That's, yeah. I I mean I rank them like Daredevil, uh, either Jessica Jones or Luke Cage in second, and yeah. then Iron Fist. Let I me. Mean, I I had a hard time getting into Iron Fist just because I was kind of worn out with everything by then, and it didn't it didn't have the grittiness of daredevil it didn't have the weight of jessica jones and it didn't have the fun of iron of a uh, luke cage because luke cage man that the way they filmed it and they did it in harlem they played up like the the brilliance of harlem oh I, the music too they, yeah, they introduced the harlem music yeah oh yeah and um by the time iron fist came out i just didn't care anymore but I think the defenders was, was a, was a good way to bring all that together. I, I am sad it got overlooked. I mean, I always loved the idea of, of the Marvel Knights and the defenders, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what was it needed to be Dr. Strange? Was that what it needed to be? The Marvel Knights and blade I ghost think, rider. I think those were the only ones. Yeah. Yeah. And a uh, moon Knight. moon Knight, Dr. Strange, ghost rider. Yeah. And blade. I think that's all they needed. Morbius maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited about moon Knight If they do that one, right. Um, and yeah, and he and he would be a great win for the uh, LGBTQ community. Well, uh, well Knight, one of his personalities would. <laughs> yeah. Well, Moon, Moon, Moon Knight was, you know, he was groundbreaking, and that he was like the first. Well, I don't know if he was the first, but he was that I remember. Okay, I'll say it this way: he was groundbreaking to me because, in my mind, as I remember, I remember him being the first. LGBTQ plus uh, um, hero on a on a large scale, and and you know, and well, he wasn't well. Pla plastic man, guy. plastic man existed. Yeah, yeah, plastic man. No, it's just, just no. The... <laughs> but I'm saying, you know, Mark Spector, man, he was awesome, yeah. and his moves rock. Like he's cool. He had the his connection with Khon Shu, the spirit that he that gave him his powers. I mean, he, you know, I think he, what, Conchu was Egyptian or was he Asian? I can't remember what it was. Yeah. But he, but that's how he got his powers. And, uh, I mean, he would be right there alongside Daredevil and Luke Cage. I mean, he'd be rolling with all those guys. 
and um and he was just cool and you know the the only exposure i had ever had to um an lgbt person in, in comics was on the back of a green of a green lantern comic um green lantern you know how jordan flying in and saying hey don't Harass people for being gay, and, and he <laughs> was using his Green Lantern light to yeah. to shine, light, you know, to the people. I had never seen it in a comic book before, so I thought that was fantastic. Yeah. I've always been a big fan of Moon Knight because I always felt like Moon Knight was the guy that was breaking barriers. And, uh, and I multiple, why the he had multiple person. He also had multiple, he had multiple personality disorder, as they called it at the time. He did, but yeah. but you know what? Which they wouldn't cool. have to do that. They could get they could get rid of that. With his character, and just I mean, why, why has MCU jumped all over that? I'm I'm sitting here looking at, look, man, Moon Knight's right here waiting on you <laughs> to just take you know take the wings and go, you know. Well, but, I think uh, Pedro Pascal is playing him. I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, which more, yeah, but yeah. I'm saying like early with it now, you know. Yeah, what I'm saying? yeah, like, yeah. I mean, he could have been here a long time ago, you know. So. I mean, yeah. and uh, just to keep going with it, as far as like dark and gritty. Yeah. Um, yeah. Netflix is in talks, I think, about doing a, a Grendel series, which, yeah, oh my cool. goodness, if, well, if they do yeah. it right, if they get, like, the guys that made Daredevil or something like that, like, because like, it's Netflix, they could Netflix it up. <laughs> oh, man, they could stop that M rating on it, yeah. do what they want. It could be terrible if they want, because it's Netflix, yeah. or, or it could be fantastic, but if they did a Grendel series where each season was a different person carrying the, the Grendel name like it is in the comics... Like, yeah. holy crap it could be awesome it would just and yeah and every season you would just get a whole new different person mm-hmm. you whole new different actor whole new different storyline set of people set of supporting actors you really could make something original every single season yeah especially if they if i think what they should do is is do what, like what true detective was trying to do except do it better because after season one it kind of fell apart but right. and, and I'm gonna go into it just for people who don't who aren't familiar with with Grindle. The first run. I'll hack along in the process. Yeah, well, yeah. The <laughs> the first run is like a few issues, and it's told from a woman's perspective of this guy named Hunter Rose, and like he's crazy. He's like a 20 year old billionaire underworld <sighs> leader, and he goes by the assassin named Grindle, and he's he's basically Batman if Batman were a villain. He's, you know, he's yeah. a, he's a prodigy genius and it's about his battle with this, this, um, guy who works for the cops named Argent, who's a cursed Native American warrior. Who's like a wolf, like a werewolf, but not like that, the con, their conflict is like background to, she's given you like the entire life story of this guy, this guy named Hunter Rose Grendel and it turns out she's the daughter of this girl that he had adopted after killing her dad. And so you're seeing like that she's only alive and she only exists because of like the one act of kindness and goodness in this terrible guy. So it, and I don't know, it's, it's brilliant. And then after that, she like dons the mask of Grendel and she gets like her own vengeance and she, it turns into a, it's like a Shakespearean tragedy. And then like her lover gets it. And when you get with him, he starts hearing like the voice of this entity known as Grendel. And after that, like his tragedy happens. And after that, it just grows and grows and grows until it's this global religion. It's like a, it's a meme, like a mimetic virus and the idea of Grendel has become this like global like antichrist type thing. Yeah, it's it's super brilliant. And then it goes further into the future, and like the the new Catholic priests are like worshiping. They call Grendel like the devil, and they're worshiping this other idea, like this vampire. And like, but I'm saying if they if they set like three or four seasons and made this this story grow of like this this cycle and this specter of violence and this. Um, like I said, almost anti-Christ, almost anti-human idea. I mean, it could be, it could be amazing. <laughs> I think it was, uh, I think it'd be a better TV series than a movie series simply yeah. because uh, I think like a story with that mass concept, you would need multiple seasons and multiple like hour long episodes, at least to, to explain everything. 
I think if you were to make Grendel into a series of movies, you'd be too pressed for time constraints to yeah. to explain everything, and I think it would risk being watered down. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, I mean, and that's something I liked about those gritty '90s. Or the, Grendel came out, I think, more in like the the '80s. But those '80s, '90s, like well, the the indie, late, late the, '80s, early '90s. Yeah. yeah, and then like the gritty, the, those those ones from there, like they were they weren't afraid. I mean, stuff like The Crow. They weren't afraid to just take a concept and run with it and go with it and not even care what happens with it. Like, let's just, let's get it off the ground. Let's see what happens. I mean, Spawn tried that. Spawn failed at that. But I at least admire the idea of it. And, um, I mean, that's what, the, and circling back around, that's what, you know, Frank Miller did do with Daredevil is, hey, let's take this guy. Let's break him down until he's a street brawler. He fights criminals, and then out of nowhere, we'll introduce this idea of the hand, right? And, and then give it even more, like jump, jump the fence, and give it even more of a, a, a concept and make it bigger than it, bigger than it ever could be. Like he really brought Daredevil into that era, you know? Right, right. And, and I think that would, and I think that would be really, I think that was really cool what Frank Miller did. Uh, you're right, and and I think that's kind of what disney plus is trying to doing now i mean i don't have total faith in disney because you know uh you can't have total faith in disney come on but you know at the same time if they if they want to go that angle if they're taking this you know they're taking the same actors that are in this netflix series and they're saying hey we're we're bringing them back for round two you know then you got a question you know hey are they actually going to make something cool out of this and, and like I said earlier, I know Kingpin has already been teased on a global scale by Disney Plus, but but I don't know, maybe it might work, you know. So we'll see. Um, yeah, and I wouldn't um I wouldn't mind seeing a, a a darker thing from from Sony's end, like if Sony wanted to do Blade, uh, Morbius, and Ghost Rider. Oh and, man, yeah. Yeah. And then just go Talk about into a missed it. opportunity if you don't take on Ghost Rider. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the stuff. And I could be wrong, but I think I th <coughs> excuse me. I think they should maybe take some. Both of these companies should maybe take some chances on like some indie guys, like directors to come in and do like a Justice League Dark. Like I, I say that selfishly, it's for, from DC because I just want to see Etrigan the Demon in a movie. Like, oh man, I, I love gone, gone, Etrigan. Be, was it? Was he saying? Gone, gone uh, the form of man. Man, enter the demon, enter again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I used to know. I mean, it's such a stupid little thing. I used to know. Like, gone the form of man. Behold or beneath. They changed it at one point. Yeah. The the, the demon yeah. enter again. Yeah. Man, but you know, it was stupid, but it's funny. Yeah, it's it was catchy. great, and he spoke in rhymes, man. and I and was to connect both of these together, and I mentioned this, I think, in, in the one I did with Josh was. Matt Wagner, Matt Wagner, however you say his name, who wrote Grendel, created mm -hmm. it. He did my favorite run of Demon. So that's really fun. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Um, or bring in Constantine again. Like, yeah, I'd love to see Constantine. Sorry, I was catching my breath there. That's what I was going to say was, um, you know, Marvel has a really good shot at doing something that dc has already excelled at um and and that is creating a dark universe yep um with this with this sony thing um i mean you know the the animated movies on dc in general anyway are mm -hmm. already really excellent i enjoy all of them uh the justice league ones the doomsday ones i enjoy all of those um even the harley quinn ones are good um but i really really enjoy justice league dark and I think Sony can capture that live action and do it well. Um, and I think, you know, you're missing out, you know, Morbius for a Halloween movie mm -hmm. or uh, Ghost Rider for a Halloween movie, you know, for your fall release, you know, your big, your big fall release. Those are great movies that you're, or great characters that you're missing out on that you can really, I mean, you want to, you want to do Ghost Rider, do the, do a Halloween special uh, for Ghost Rider, and it be like the the nine levels of hell, almost like Dante's mm -hmm. Inferno, and take Ghost Rider through the nine levels of hell. Well, and, it's, it's almost and like 
be awesome, you know? Well, it's almost like these guys are allergic to making money, and there's a whole theory behind it that I'll get into it in just a second, because it's, it's a theory, but it might be true. But, I mean, they were in talk of getting the guy who made, like, The Raid to make a Deathstroke movie, where, where he's basically, like, it's be like the raid, but with Deathstroke, where he's like in a building trapped with the underworld, and he's blowing up dudes. Like, how amazing would that be? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and Deathstroke would get out easy, and he's. Yeah. I mean, Deathstroke rivals Batman for crying out loud. Yeah. He's gonna, he's gonna survive. You know, but how, that's gonna be awesome. How amazing would that be? But part of it, and this is a whole other discussion for another day. But the rumors are that there's this thing called like ESG, and I forget. It's like. Uh, I'm going to butcher, but anyway, the idea is that maybe some of these companies, like these major companies, they're basing a score off of like environmental, social justice, kind of like left leaning policies, and they're getting paid but for it from like the federal government. Maybe. I don't and, know. I haven't yeah. heard that before. Well, I mean, look it up. It's an idea that well, a lot of these comic dudes have been saying because they're like, man, these, these comic companies, particularly these media companies, are just putting out stuff that's not making money, but somehow they're making tons of money and their stuff's not selling. So I'm just opening the, because I haven't researched it myself, but I'm just opening up right. that can of worms as a means to try to explain. Like, I, I don't know, especially like whoever owns DC, it was at AT&T or whoever, like, they yeah, just, they just seem allergic to making money. <laughs> like, yeah, like you it's, have it's strange. It just just give us. I mean, I'm glad we're getting the Batman with Robert Pattinson. That looks great, and and um, yeah. And I actually think he's yeah. going to do a good Batman. I yeah, actually I think he looks. I think him. I think he looks great, and I think um, yeah. it, I think it's a nice combination of the uh, Christopher Nolan and Tim Burton movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And with that, man, I'll go off on a tangent. I don't care. We can just make this episode about, you know, gritty heroes and Daredevil. But sure. I, I'm hoping, I wish they would do this because there's a rumor that they were going to do um, in the Batman, at least hint towards the uh, the Court of Owls, if you remember that from the New 52. Oh, yeah. Well, New yep. 52 is, is my most recent. You know, you guys yeah. hinted, you and Josh hinted on uh, New 52. Um, y'all were hitting on that. Uh, um, uh, a couple episodes back yeah and um and man and uh, you know i was listening to it and i was like yes new 52 is of the last i don't know two decades is the best run dc's had and i love i mean they have blackest night they have all the cool stuff and um but yeah i remember court of owls was awesome too that was new 52 i i i, I, I almost forgot about that That's, yeah, yeah well the ta- the the talent is one of my favorite batman villains ever yeah and, but yeah. but yeah i mean there's this I, there was this theory at least that was early on that maybe the riddler was trying to get batman's attention to point him towards that the court of owls actually controls everything and it's kind of like an eyes wide shut type deal and batman's the one that's out of the loop right and right. That, that'd be a great idea like that'd be wonderful the two things i want to see in a batman movie is let's go crazy with it let's get either deathstroke in a live action batman movie well it's, let's say three then Let's get either the Court of Owls slash, slash the Talon, and let's get Azrael, yeah. or maybe do oh, yeah. both. Azrael. I would love to yeah. see like the Order of Saint Dema, like coming after Batman. Like I think if they're gonna do this dark Batman universe, let's do like Batman Gothic. Like let's do like, you know, maybe not yeah. ma- magic, but on the border of it. Like let's do. Let's do the Court of Owls. And, yeah, let's do that kind of stuff. Right. Like, yeah, let's really Illuminati get into stuff. that. Yeah. yeah, and let's. I mean, I just want to see Azrael, especially um, the Curse of the White Knight kind of design of Azrael, where he actually used like a real sword that was on fire. Because I don't think the '90s like power gauntlet it was going to look good on screen. But right. I, would, I would love to see this like six five six six like big burly bl- blonde um, antithesis to Batman. You know, fighting him. Well, you can bring the phantasm in if you're going to go that route with the gothic stuff, the dark yeah, stuff. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Bring back oh, uh, Andrea Beaumont and do that. Yeah, just you, you can do, do it yeah. right. And, and and you could make her part of the Court of Owls, or her family it, was, or something. You know, you could tie it all in together. Isn't this all? Uh, I mean, isn't the this new Batman coming out? He he's uh, this is all this is based off a of long Halloween, right? I think there's hints of it, yeah. Except I think they're making the Riddler the killer instead of uh, 
one calendar man who was the killer who was well the... they never really said who it was they they said it may have been like they hinted that it may have been somebody in the in the family but it was in the family itself at the, right. at the end they they pointed it it was harvey dent's wife that that's did a, right that did a lot of it that's right but it was actually a couple people that were doing the killing it was just yeah. one person yeah but but they were all kind of playing off the the hall but they, they were talking holiday man and calendar Calendar Man was Holiday Man, right? They're the same guy. No, it was Calendar. Are, uh, it was Calendar Man. They called. They called the guy doing the killings Holiday, but they never knew who it was. Yeah. Right, because he was killing on holidays, but that's mm-hmm. why they were using Calendar Man. Then they had, um, uh, then they had uh, uh, Riddler was getting involved because Riddler was helping to solve it. Yeah. But I think that in this version, Riddler is actually the one doing it in they're using other people to track Riddler. Uh, I don't know. It's it's Riddler is the bad guy. I mean, he's the antagonist, but but he's he uh I forget in which way they're going to approach it. But it looks cool all the same. I mean, you know, we need a good Riddler villain. You know, sorry Jim Carrey, we need a good Riddler villain. So. <laughs> I mean, call me crazy, I think in his prime or both of their primes, I do think Jim Carrey and Willem Dafoe could have both been good jokers. Yeah, I think the I think the the Riddler for um for Batman and Robin or Batman Returns Batman Robin, Forever Batman Forever yeah. yeah I think the uh, I think that would have been I think that was like like is that the Joker Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he kind of bored I mean he even said a Joker riddle right riddle me this riddle me that who's afraid of the big black bat yeah. I am and I was like that's something a Joker would say you know I don't know Yeah it was very it was very Joker-esque cause they did. and then Two-Face was in it for some reason and I love Tommy Lee Jones but I was like man jump, that's not your that's not the role you should be playing Tommy Lee Jones <laughs> like and that wasn't a good Two-Face because you can't yeah. Yeah. But man um, oh man Aaron Eckhart was the best yeah. the best Two-Face and yeah. I don't know that I'll ever be topped I mean you cared about Harvey Dent like I cared that he got hurt mm-hmm. I was like damn like I knew he was gonna get hurt I knew you know you know it's gonna happen you know it's coming but you feel bad because you're like, wow, I really did get behind Harvey Dent. Um, I remember buying uh, years back when the Dark Knight came out. If you remember, I used to have a, a, a I believe in Harvey Dent shirt, and it was a yeah. campaign shirt that run for re-election for district attorney of Gotham City. It was like a real actual, um, um, like a, it looked like a real campaign. <laughs> it was part of their well, marketing. Well, I, it up. I was like, heck yeah, this is awesome. Well, I'm not going to say the name of it because I don't want to dox myself, but <laughs> in our hometown, I worked for the medical transport company, one of them that bought a <gasps> uh, a Gotham City ambulance from the oh, set. Because yeah. they, yeah. they had made some of these ambulances from the set where he blows up the, the, the hospital and my boss had won one at an auction. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So it said yeah. Goth- Gotham City General or whatever, or Gotham General, whatever it was on the yeah. side of it. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's that's awesome. That's hilarious. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> but yeah. no, I, I think with this Batman universe, like I, I really would like to see it as Batman's fighting forces way bigger than him. Like even, not even like street level stuff, not even the Joker, but like he gets in and he's just started he's young and it's like man this this city's way worse than you think like it's well, not i think it yeah. can start off on, on street level things yeah. i think what it is is you 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 bust you bust your dope dealer on the corner well first of all mm-hmm. you bust the kid the, yeah. sell the drug you trace that back to the dope dealer on the corner you trace that back trace that back you know let the dominoes fall and then you know before you find out the simple drug uh deal that was going on to the kid uh, down the street uh, ends up being tied to this big global thing. You know what I'm saying? You like you start mm-hmm. with small fries, and you build your way up, and then you're like, oh my gosh, like this is bigger and bigger, and oh, I'm in over my head. And now we're not just dealing with drug kingpins, but they're tied to politicians who are tied to mm-hmm. an organization, court of owls, who knows, you know, whatever. But you know, you just keep progressing, 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 and there's a new boss almost like a video game at every level right so oh i think that'd be great i I think you could do both if they wanted to keep the run of like multiple villains (laughs) is i think you could do asriel and the talons 
together. I mean, yeah. you could have the the Order of Saint Dumas and and uh, the Court of Owls to get like maybe they're rivals or something. But you could really tie it into like at the end of like one of these movies is you know maybe Bruce Wayne gets a letter or something and whoever these people are like the Court of Owls like they they know he's Batman and right. like he just pushed a little too far and it's like a warning like okay you can you can bust some of these street dudes you can do this but i mean gotham is ours right or you could have him take down one of the organizations yep and the other one send him the letter and saying you've upset the balance yep that'd be like, great like there, there was, they we we're their enemy but we res- you know we respect them that we you know mm-hmm. and if you take them out then you're upsetting the balance and even though you know, um, you know, Azrael. What was Azrael? What'd you say? The uh, not Court of Owls. Oh, the, uh, the, the Order of Saint Dumas. Yeah, Order of Saint Dumas. So the when you say the Order, so the he could take out the Order of Saint Dumas, mm-hmm. and then the Court of Owls can be like, you you just upset the balance. Like, yeah. why did you do that? And he didn't know. He would not know until yeah. after I think it's a post credit scene or something, or or if you're doing a TV series, uh, the final scene would be him receiving a letter. From the court of owls saying uh we need to see you mm-hmm. and then you find out on the first episode of the next season or whatever that they're pissed off that he defeated them because there was some sort of rivalry but the rivalry needed to exist for the world to exist the way they had it you know what i'm saying or whatever you know yeah some kind so, of agreement yeah i like um i like the idea as much as i love I me mean, i loved the the nolan trilogy i mean i think it was like a, a b an a plus and then maybe a b or a c in that order yeah. but yeah there wasn't a lot of detective work no and, well he wasn't even a detective i mean they didn't even try to they didn't even try to go that angle i mean they didn't even yeah. approach that way they had him study yeah. they had him study crime he can he understood he did some he did some stuff. I mean, it'd be like he trade. He would trace like a company, like a thing to a company, but it wasn't like the old skulking, looking for clues, trying to put together a mystery. There wasn't a lot of mystery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, this would be this. You could do a like a, a sense of foreboding, like a darkness. Like the deeper he goes, trying to do things good, the worse it gets. Right. Oh man. <laughs> and you know what? I just thought of. You know, and we're talking about DC. I know we started with Daredevil, and now we're all the way over in DC. But, <laughs> but, um, but it's fine. Um, but we're talking about dark heroes and dark angles. You know, it reminds me of how Rorschach from yeah, yeah. Watchmen. See, that'd be yeah, that's a great these, comparison. These, yeah, would do these investigations, and and whether you watched the movie or read the comic, when he investigated the. Um, the sexual abuse and murder of the little girl and how he did that mm-hmm. and how that culminated and came together and him going through the, you know, the man's uh, apartment late at night or house or whatever with the flashlight and digging through the, the, the furnace and finding the, the burned singed underwear in the furnace, you know, that could be like really vivid, really like the kind of things that Batman goes up against because now he's seeing the, He's seeing the the unholy side, right? The mm-hmm. the monster, and they don't even have to be comic book created monsters. They're very human monsters um, that he is finding, like the leg bone that a dog is chewing of a little girl. Ugh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like what Rorschach no, I, found. no, you're you're absolutely you know? right. Like that's yeah. that's the the cool stuff about Batman, especially if he's a younger one. You haven't come in. He's you know he thinks he's fighting bad guys and you're like man like it's way worse than you think like <laughs> right and, oh and then yeah. and then this is where he where he where he has to do i kill the guy or not mm-hmm. because the, rorschach the, we know kills the man he get in the movie he kills him with a meat cleaver and in the comics does he burn him alive or something like that yeah so um but he he uh he kills the guy but batman doesn't obviously because batman mm-hmm. doesn't kill but this is the deciding point batman says you know uh you raped and murdered this little girl you deserve to die um yes certainly uh but is it is it my place to make that decision or does that make me no better than you because now i'm killing you mm-hmm. should i just turn you over to the authorities and let the authorities handle it and of course we all know batman always 
doesn't make the kill, right? He maybe knock you out. He maybe, you know, break a bone, break your jaw, break your nose, whatever. Yeah, he'll hurt you. <laughs> yeah, he'll 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 yeah he'll put you in a wheelchair. You know, he'll split your back and put you in a wheelchair, but you're not going to die. You'll just be you know uh, paralyzed or or you know walking with a cane the rest of your life, but you're not going to die. And you know maybe he does that. Maybe he hurts you really bad, and he says you know. You know, this isn't right. Uh, you know, he, he beats the living crap out of this guy who does this perp, and and he's right here, right about to kill him. And he's like, you know what? You're already going to be in a coma. You know, it's not my place. You know, you, you know, he will always make that decision. You can't make Batman not make that decision. He has to make the decision to let the bad guy live. But, mm-hmm. but, um, but it has to be in that situation. Does that make sense? Yeah, I would oh. lo- I would love the idea of and, and you compare it, of course, with you know, of course, like the Court of Owls and the Order of Saint Dumas or keeping order, like that's the whole thing. But their their order comes at the cost of of murder and in evil and letting the stuff go, and Batman can't let it go. And you can really play off of that, like the <clears throat> maybe they're doing a greater good than Batman, but he has standards, you know. Yeah, and but that might be the thing that that makes it that he can't beat them. Yeah. Because they're willing to kill and he's not. Mm-hmm. He's going to say, well, I'm going to make you walk with a cane the rest of your life, but I won't kill you. But Or I'll put you in a wheelchair for the rest of your life, but I'm not going to kill you. However, I'll let the courts handle you, but but then the courts aren't going to handle it because the courts are well, and right it, there with him. And that, and that's I mean, where you and, can bring a two face in. You know, that's how you get yeah. Aaron Eckhart. Well, that would you be know, a... That's how you can That'd be a great twist too. If is him to learn, you know, if and I guess we're, we're completely speculating on this movie. Neither one of us have seen it. Oh yeah, no, but, we're but we're if, totally playing off what yeah. <laughs> ultimate ultimate fantasy is. What would be cool? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, it'd be cool if you stop someone like the Riddler or something like that, and he's been telling you the whole time how pointless it is, and you know how the city's corrupt, and of course at the end when Batman gets them and they arrested, and then you, what you do is at the end you see that the bad guy is right. And that the entire system is rigged, and that there is a greater threat, and that all the good Batman just did came to naught. And it's like, hey man, you just you fought the wrong guy, right? Yeah, right. And That's even a great Scarecrow way to do it. That, yeah, that would be a good motive behind why Scarecrow uses the fear gas. Mm-hmm. There's a you great, know? yeah, and then that would be a great Scarecrow motive for his fear gas, and then. And uh, and and he, and he was a psychologist anyway, so he could do all the mind games he wants with with Batman in addition to, to the fear gas, you know. Mm-hmm. And but but then that but then the twist is then you bring in Harvey Dent because then Harvey Dent, like in The Dark Knight, is the light at the end of the tunnel because he really is like the goodest, the good guy, the incorruptible, the the uh, Clark Kent, if you will. Since we're in DC, he's not going to be you know, swayed uh, until he is. Mm-hmm. Bam, bombshell. Because then it becomes <laughs> Two Face. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Well, no, I mean, it'd be kind of cool to do that, to do a Batman trilogy of movies where, or however many, where he takes down maybe the Court of Owls and the, the Order of Saint Dumas, and then he, you start realizing that while that empire is crumbling, he's destabilized Gotham even worse. And now maybe this new brood of villains is starting. And that's where you start seeing like those guys, you know? Yeah. And yeah. You, and you, I mean, you could literally just end it there. Like it could be the Batman origin story of, of, you know, he, he took it, he, maybe he stopped a greater threat, but now his, his curse is that he's, he's now the, he's now the order. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you know what? Then you recycle. I hate I hate it when comic book movies and, and comic books recycle things. But one thing that you can recycle that you can always recycle with Batman, that should it's the same for Spider Man. If we're talking about last episode too, Spider Man, with great power comes great responsibility. It, I know it gets recycled and people get tired of it, but you gotta have it. Mm-hmm. This one, sorry, excuse me. This one uh, with Batman is you know um, you're the hero. Was it you live long enough to see yourself become the villain, right? Yep, either, die, either die a hero or, yeah, or you live long enough to see yourself live become the villain. To see, yeah, and, and that is a constant theme. I mean, that was genius and, uh, when Two-Face said that, you know, in, in, uh, in The Dark Knight. And and I think uh, that is a theme that, that if you're going to approach with a dark Batman, 
you have to do it no matter what you gotta say you know because eventually he does become the bad guy because you know the cops eventually turn on him because now he's just striking fear in everybody Mm -hmm. you know so i mean that's half the reason the cops turn on him anyways because they're just as scared of him as the as the bad guys are they're just all afraid of him you know oh yeah 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 i think that's um i think it's a good idea man i'm gonna i'm gonna cut it short here just because it's late i'm tired but um yeah man i look forward to a to pontificating on some more uh some more stories we'll never see with you <laughs> yeah actual good actual good stories that anybody with an original creative mind other than us because i don't have the ability to do it you do you have it you're doing it but i don't um <laughs> you know uh you know any you know you're doing it with godfo you're getting the original cool shit out with godfo me i'm not doing it you know i'm I, i'm not doing that uh, but i'll get I'll, I'll, I, sure would, I'll, I sure would love to <laughs> To get, to get, you know, to to for people, you know, <laughs> DC that will never ever listen or care about what I say have to hear what I have to say, even though they'll never do anything with it. You know what I'm saying? So Hans, I would pay to like hear you like read the newspaper. <laughs> so I think you should start. I mean, just call it Son of Mercury if you want. Just start something and start commenting on well, stuff. So Mercury, so um, so Mercury is is you know the. Uh, it's it's stupid. So Mercury, there's a reason, uh, and I want to go into why uh, I uh, call myself that. So first of all, um, it, it's twofold. One is a stupid reason, but it's a stupid reason that I can explain to common people. So they're like, oh, okay. And the other reason is is a little more personal, but uh, it's not too revealing. It's just a little more closer to home <laughs> after I hawk up a lung. Okay, so again, I'm sorry. Well, I'm still getting over the sickness, guys. But um, what it is is uh, my astrological sign is Gemini, and the ruling planet over Gemini is Mercury, and so that would be why I'm a son of Mercury because I'm literally a son of Gemini or the god of Mercury, right? So that's my um, plain, plain Jane answer. Um, but truly, uh, I'm working on a career in news media, and Mercury was the messenger god. And so it's kind of a double play off of, hey, not only is it my sign, haha, you know, fun uh, party party talk, but also it's a play off of my actual career because uh, I am, um, you know, I'm newsroom certified. I'm not hired anywhere at the moment, but I am newsroom certified and and working on a journalism degree, on a news writing degree. So, um, you know, that's that's where the son of Mercury comes from. So the the best of your God himself. Man, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll get you to to start commenting on some stuff and making content one of these days. But um, all right, yeah. I'm gonna cut it short, guys, and uh, we look forward to the next one. See you next week. Peace. <laughs>